Up to now, we have seen GPIO ports, how we can reconfigure them as regular I.O. or alternate functions and which GPIO registers we use for configuration. Now we will see how we can access the GPIO registers and modify them. First, we will start the review of pointers and then how we can use these pointers for accessing GPIO registers. Then we will look at the symbolic definitions and some popular register operations. Finally, we will write a port initialization example in C. Now let's briefly review pointers. Here we have a declaration of three integer variables, PC, C and T. But before the variable PC, we have a star sign which specifies that PC is a pointer. When we say it's a pointer, it means this variable is holding an address of another variable. On the right hand side, we have our memory and the addresses of each location. Now let's assume we have compiled our code and the compiler has assigned variable PC to memory address hex 2000 and the address hex 2022 variable C and let's assume variable T is assigned to memory location hex 2030. I just made up these assignments. In reality, this may not be the case. As you notice, our pointer variable currently does not point to anything. Now, in our code, let's assign 21 to our variable C. It means the memory address 2020 now will have decimal value of 21 or a hex value of 15. In the next line, let's make an assignment to our pointer. As you know, we have to assign an address to our variable PC. To do this, we use a ampersand sign and the variable name. So this ampersand sign, it assigns the address of variable C to our pointer PC. Now the address of variable C is written to the memory location for the pointer. So we will have an address of hex 2020 in this memory location. Now this means our variable PC is pointing to the our variable C. So PC is a pointer to the variable C. Now we can use our pointer to access memory location hex 2020. Now if I write star PC equal to 2. So this means the content of variable C is now changed to 2. So now we have decimal 2 or hex value of 2 is written to this location. So this star is different from the pointer declaration. This is called dereferencing operator. So it simply refers the contents of the pointed location. So it refers the value inside the pointed address which in this case is hex 2020. And lastly, let's make an assignment to our variable t. Now in this case, I will be multiplying our pointed value, the value pointed by our pointer by 5. So it means I will be writing a hex value of a to the memory location 2030. So in this slide we have seen how to access memory location pointed by a pointer. Now let's look at some common mistakes with the pointers. As the pointer variable needs to point an address, 
it is very easy to make a mistake while using them. So in this slide, we will look at some very basic mistakes. Assume we have declared an integer pointer and an integer variable C. If I directly assign the variable C to PC like this, this will be an error because PC is a pointer and it is expecting an address. But we are assigning a value to this pointer which is wrong. So the correct way should be as we have seen we should use this ampersand sign before the variable name. Similarly if I use this assignment this will be also an error because now this site is expecting a value but we are assigning an address here. So this was also a mistake and the correct way should be just use PC without star and the address of where I will see. And finally, let's try to use a pointer to print a variable's value. So let's say I assign 4D to my variable and I point this variable and I try to print this value of 40 using this printf. So if I write this, this will be an, an error because this will print the address of C, not 40, right? So to correct this, I need to add a star sign here. Now it is correct and it will print. Now it prints 40. Okay, now let's look at another property of our pointers. So one important property in C is that assigning an address to the pointer at the declaration. Actually, in a microcontroller, we know the addresses of registers beforehand and we can utilize this. So if you don't know the address beforehand, I need to do an assignment like this. But if I know the address, so assume, I know the address to point so what I can do I can do an initialization a declaration so to do this I again have a pointer to integer variable PC and then now I directly write the address here. So what will happen? So if the compiler assigns the hex address of 2000 to the our pointer variable, now this location will have this address of 2020 and my pointer will be pointing to this address directly. Note that this is the integer pointer declaration. So this is not dereferencing. So do not confuse this. And also I need a type casting here to say the compiler this is a type of integer to a pointer. So this is called typecasting to an integer pointer. So without this typecasting, the compiler will give me an error. So in this slide we have seen if we know the address beforehand, we can initialize our pointer at the declaration and this is the case with microcontrollers
Okay, now let's look at the basic data types in ARMC. So in this slide, you see different types of data. You have car, signed car, unsigned car, and how many bits they hold. And this is how many bits they hold in bytes and the range of the values. So the one type that is important for us in this lecture is the unsigned long type. So, so this is a 32-bit type and it has used 4 bytes and this is the range it represents. Now we will be using this unsigned long to declare our pointers. So let's look at the pointer access to GPIO registers. 